Hi guys, Brain the Squirrel Lion back with another video and today I'm going to be running through everything that's just happened at Hell in a Cell. All in all, it was kind of a 50-50 pay-per-view for me. A lot fell flat, but there was a lot that was absolutely brilliant in it. So yeah, let's just start going through them all. The first match that we saw on the kickoff show was between The New Day and Rusev Day. At this point I was really annoyed because this is two pay-per-views in a row where they've put Rusev Day on the pre-show and I just feel like they deserve a lot more than that but the match itself there was a lot of good back and forth Aiden English really kept me interested in this match Aiden English looked great I think the clashing between Aiden English and Rusev really felt pretty decent and the way the match ended it, it does lead into more looking looking at things going forward so yeah uh, the match ended with uh, Trouble in Paradise from Kofi Kingston onto Aiden English after a bit of a weird thing between English and Rusev and New Day walked away with a victory New Day being champs you can't really go wrong they are one of the biggest tag teams in the company, so yeah. Now going on to the main pay-per-view itself, Hell in a Cell. And the first match that we saw there was Jeff Hardy against Randy Orton inside the cell. What can you say about this match? This match was absolutely incredible. So many weapons being introduced, so much action going on. That cringy moment, that, oh, I actually had to look away when he put the screwdriver through Jeff Hardy's... Uh, stretched ear and then just started twisting it I had to look away because it made me feel like I was gonna throw up I'm not even gonna lie and I'm loving it it's like proper proper sadistic Randy Orton but then uh, going towards the end of the match seeing Jeff Hardy climbing up the ladders ready to jump onto Randy Orton who was laid out on a table instead of just hopping over the ladder and going onto him he decides to literally hang on to the top of the cell start swinging and then drop down onto Randy but Randy moves out of the way and that crash wow I wasn't sure like what was going on I didn't know if like Jeff Hardy might have been dead for all I knew my heart like burst out of my chest I'm not even gonna lie there my heart just went boom Jeff Hardy said before it expect something extreme and I think we did all expect something extreme and we got exactly that after it, the ref calls for the cell to be lifted and uh, paramedics to come down, but Randy Orton just starts shouting, no, you do your job, and pins Jeff, who at this point just looks dead. So yeah, <laughs> Randy Orton walks away with a victory there, and yeah, Jeff Hardy got what he needed. He, need he wanted that massive spot, and Randy Orton got to walk away with a victory after looking sadistic. I just feel like that was brilliant. Great way to start the show. The next match that we're going to move on to is the SmackDown Women's Championship match between Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch. Throughout this, a lot of great back and forth. These women know how to work well together, which we've seen time and time again in the past. They really didn't disappoint. They did put on a great match. Quite a few times we saw a lot of false submissions, which did amp everything up. But I, th I think one of the best parts of this was the fact that they had Becky literally focusing on that arm and literally just destroying that arm. I don't think there was any other way they could have gone with this. Uh, Charlotte Fleur winning the championship is never a bad thing, but they did the right thing by having Becky Lynch win it because the, it's what the fans wanted and I just feel like a heel Becky going forward as champion is it's just going to blow up. Like, I, I, I just see good, good things coming from this. Let's also talk about the way Becky won this match. Charlotte going for the spear and Becky rolling through it. Becky literally rolled it through into a pin and got the victory. And I feel like the refusal to have the handshake at the end was just like the icing on top of the cake. Amazing match, amazing feud. What more needs to be said on this? Next, we move on to the Raw Tag Team Championship match between... Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. Again, this match really did not disappoint. A lot of great action between all of the superstars in this match. At one point, it literally just looked one-sided with uh, Drew and Dolph just 
decimating Seth Rollins and not allowing him to get the tag on Dean Ambrose, who was just raring to go. You could see like a pure psychopath tendency in his eyes, and it, it was just brilliant. Like I, I feel like this whole match played out perfectly, just the way it should have. And the ending to the match was beautiful. Like honestly, it was just beautiful. Seth Rollins uh, with the superplex, and then rolling through to go for the Falcon Arrow. But before he gets to hit the Falcon Arrow, Claymore, and then. Dolph gets the one, two, three. Like, it looked like Dolph didn't even know that he was, he just won the match. It was perfect. For me, this is the match of the night. It was brilliant. The, the mad thing to say is that Seth Rollins has just got so many match of the night moments from me throughout the past load of pay-per-views. He, he just keep, continues to impress. Now we move on to AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. Now, this match, it did feel a lot better than the last match that they had. At the beginning of the match, every time AJ Styles started to mount an offense, Joe was just cutting him out. He was just destroying him. So it it really built on the whole power of Joe. But then with AJ Styles having the comeback from that, it really built on the whole AJ doesn't give up factor of the of everything. So yeah, this match I, I feel like it got to showcase both sides of the superstars in a really good fashion most of the time throughout this uh, match it did feel like Joe was gonna walk away with a victory Joe just looked so powerful and so unstoppable but yeah uh, AJ Styles walking away with a victory right race with me here Joe hits the coquina clutch AJ Styles rolls through st while still in the coquina clutch he rolls th it through into a pin Gets the three count, but it's later shown that he did tap out to the Coquina Clutch. But referee's decision is final, which means we push through to another match. This one's going to be at Super Showdown. The talk with uh, Joe and Paige backstage does lead me to believe they will put a stipulation on this match. Hopefully it might be what Joe suggested and no disqualifications match and we'll get to see full-on brutality from both superstars. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to seeing what goes down at Super Showdown. Then we had Miz and Maurice against Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella. This match, I guess it was an okay match. It really didn't feel as good as it could have been. Uh, I guess the whole fact that Maurice just kept refusing to get into the match, it did add that extra little bit of entertainment into it. But I don't know, it didn't really feel as full on as it could have been. I think the oddest thing in this match is the fact that Maurice pinned Brie clean. Like, there was no cheating involved in the pin. There was no grabbing of the tights, nothing. It was just a pin, a clean pin. Maybe this will push the storyline a bit more. Brie and Daniel were talking about how they couldn't, how Miz and Maurice couldn't get the win cleanly. So maybe it'll give like a little bragging faction to everything. I just feel like there could have been more in this match. Yeah, as far as it goes with that, I am pretty disappointed. Like, it's Miz versus Daniel Bryan. Do a lot more with it. Next, we have the Raw Women's Championship match. This was Ronda Rousey versus Alexa Bliss. The thing that I really liked about this match was the fact that the odds were evened up. Literally by the ribs. Anytime Ronda started to mount an offense, Alexa Bliss would go straight back to the ribs and even the odds. So I felt like that worked brilliantly in there. But the fact of the matter is we all knew that Ronda Rousey was walking away with a victory on this. I mean, one of the big key factors is evolution. It's already been determined that Alexa Bliss is going to face Trish Stratus. And none of us could really see that happening for the championship. So yeah... It kind of makes sense that Ronda Rousey was walking away with a victory. Unlike the last match that we saw, we actually got to see a match between these two superstars. Uh, the match ended with Ronda Rousey trying to put Alexa Bliss in the armbar. And Alexa Bliss just taps out straight away. Smart play because it means you can fight another day 
without having your arm broken, so fair enough. But the great thing about this is we got more out of the match than that we thought we would. Ronda does look brilliant, even when she's like supposed to be showing injury and everything, she still looks absolutely amazing. So I do see a great future for Ronda. So now we move on to the final match, and this was Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman inside Hell in a Cell with Mick Foley as the guest referee. This match, pretty disappointing. I mean, there was a lot of big hits from each of the superstars, which did did peak my excitement. I was hoping for a lot more, but yeah. Yeah, I guess the action was pretty good. Like, it could have been better, but it was pretty good. I did like the point where Drew and Dolph showed up, and then Seth and Dean showed up, and they started going at it, and those four men got to the top of the cell and started going at it up there. Yeah, that really added something to the match, and the whole part where Dolph and Seth were, like, fighting on the cell, yeah, it really... That really added something to it, but unfortunately it wasn't enough. And then we had Brock Lesnar come come out. Uh, a lot of people might be excited by this. Uh, a lot of people might be really angry. I'm just tired. And no one wants to see him back in the title picture, let's be honest. Because all this means is we're going to be having another Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar match. Maybe it'll be Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar versus Braun Strowman. Like, that's the big possibility here. But the fact of the matter is, we just don't want to see it anymore. We are sick and tired of it. But yeah, Brock Lesnar comes out, starts destroying both men in the ring, and then leaves, and the match gets called uh, No Contest, I guess. So, we didn't get a winner out of that. We didn't get a loser. Roman Reigns retains the title. But... Yeah, there's not really much more that can be said about that. Um, that really disappointed me for the end of the end of the night. It was just anticlimactic for me. But people may disagree. Like I'm guessing a lot of you will disagree, but for me that it just fell flat there. So all in all, the pay per view itself was kind of a 50 50. Uh, a lot of great moments, a lot of shit moments. Like I said all this at the beginning of the video, but yeah. 50-50 so it did disappoint me to be fair no no pay-per-view should be a 50-50 but yeah when it comes to the forfeits my brother was the one that lost so he will be facing it on Wednesday what we're doing we're still not too sure on but on Wednesday you will see something but yeah I hope you did enjoy this video and if you did like it give it a like comment down below what your favorite moment of the night was uh, I think for me it was just seeing Becky Lynch taking the victory. Like, I've been waiting for this for a long time, just seeing Becky holding the title again, and I felt like this was in perfect fashion. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you can always stay up to date on my content. And yeah, I will catch you guys in the next one.